Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tommy Cannon and Bobby Ball. Cannon and Ball were another nightclub act which made the leap into big-time television stardom. In the act, Tommy Cannon bullied little Bobby Ball. As a result, the audience loved Bobby but hated Tommy. Listen, I've just got one more impression left, right? And I'm going to do it on me own. Hey, don't get sure to me, Tommy. <laughs> I've done a bit, you know. What? A bit of that typhoon. <laughs> Certainly when we first started doing all this stuff, people really believed it. The general public really believed What's happening? I mean, he used to go outside oh. of some clubs and got hit by women with umbrellas used to hit him. Yeah. Because they believed you were really picking on them. You can't get me, can you? Because you've got boxing gloves on. <laughs> the formula worked. Tommy hit Bobby and Cannon and Ball hit the big time. We had a Rolls Royce, we had a lot of money, we had a, a board. We just... Listen, we're two lads from Oldham. You've got to think about it. If we're gonna we're gonna ground in our pocket, blimey, you spend it. We lost a little control as well yes. th through it because of it all being sort of all of a sudden, woof, all this sort of success is on top of you. Um, and you know, really, I suppose to be honest about it, we weren't uh, we weren't young kids, were we? When no. when it happened, so uh, but you well, know, I were, I were a lot younger. Well, you were I, or you were younger than me. And uh, True, yes. so consequently, yeah, we lost the plot a little bit with it, you know. Bobby Ball became a comedy superstar. Women loved him and the money was pouring in. But the lifelong friendship with Tommy began to fall apart. Me and this lad here had come from a welding floor and worked all the way through, and we ended up falling out. Now, no fame's worth that. You meant more so than me. <laughs> <laughs> you said I were a dog. I never said you were a dog. In so many words. Exactly. You instituted it. No, but I mean, did I say you were a dog? You said, well, did I? You said, did I? No, did I? Did I? You well, said, did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? Listen. Well, did I? Did I? Did I? Don't be ignorant. Well, did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? Tommy. Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? Well, you didn't. No, I didn't. Well, sit. <laughs> I'm fed up of you now, always arguing. Go on, get off. Bournemouth was one of the worst summer seasons, I think, that we could have possibly, as I remember, um, Bournemouth backstage was a long corridor, and he had, Bobby had one dressing room at one bottom end, I had it at the top end, and if we passed the corridor, and we literally had to turn side by side to pass one another, if you like, and we wouldn't even speak to one another. And I'd go home at night and I would, I, and I'll be honest, I, I used to cry. It was one of the worst periods of my life. It really was. I mean, because A, I couldn't understand why it was there. B, we're right in the heart of the success. I, we couldn't want for anything else at, at that particular time in our lives. And, all, and for some reason, we're not getting on. What's brought all this on? You've done it again! I did, I did. Woo! <laughs> you dirty hey! swine! You could have made me pregnant then. I think it regos took over. I mean, your ego's continually being stroked when you're on television. Always being stroked. And I think it really, you think, oh. See, I thought I was the main one of the act, and he thought he was the main one of the act, and he should have realised it was me. After four years of not speaking, Cannon and Ball were on the brink of collapse, but a fateful meeting would change everything. I met a fella called Max Wigley, who, who, was, um, who was a vicar, if you like, and we started talking about God and, and so on and so on. I found it very interesting, and uh, it gave me a bit of peace. And uh, I started seeing, looking at Tom, and I looked at him in a different light, because I started seeing the good in him and not the bad. I'm very sorry for what I've done. Should be. Because I wouldn't spoil you out for anything. You're my no. hero. <laughs> You're a legend to me, a legend boy. Legend, not a leg end. <laughs> Tommy Cannon also became a Christian, and they now regularly tour with their gospel shows. I want to thank you, Lord. Because we know double acts that didn't get on and went the full career not getting on, and the public never knew. We've been honest about ours and said, look, we didn't get on for four years, and it's fantastic now 
But, you know, we went to Nam's Lab to get me out of here together, and mm. we do shows together, and we're here. Uh, not as young men anymore, but we've been through all that, and it's great at the end of your career to say, we went there, and we came out of it, and we did, for whatever reason. We hated one another, now we love each other.